After my build video featuring the changes to Bottom Tree Stormcaller, I saw a common theme in my comments around a specific exotic that also got a nice buff with Season 15. So I decided to throw on the stag and take it for a run in the Crucible, and I could not take it off. This is because in Season 15, the stag receives a nice buff to its exotic perk. It reads, your rift provides damage reduction to allied guardians standing in it. Grants rift energy when you're critically wounded. On your death, creates a healing rift on your corpse. The main change here is now when you use a rift while wearing the stag, you win allied guardians who stand in your rift will receive a 15% damage reduction while in your rift. What this looks like to your enemy, using 140s as an example, instead of doing 70 damage and being able to 3 tap, you now do 60 damage and are forced to land all your shots and hopefully 4 tap someone. This puts a ton of pressure on your enemy not only land all their shots, but they need to do it quickly. Because not only are you taking less damage in your rift, but you're also regening your health at the same time. You want to talk about having confidence in a gunfight, with the stag and a rift down, I was challenging basically everything, and you could tell it really threw off the enemy team because the time it was taking to kill me was much longer than any other guardian they were facing. This plays perfectly into the second part of the perk of how the stag grants you rift energy when you are critically wounded, and this translates into you getting your rift in roughly 22 seconds at 100 recovery versus 41 without the stag equipped. This is where I'll mention I have a video all about how to best position your rift and how to get the most out of this class ability. So after you finish this video, you're definitely going to want to check out that one. But the Cliff Notes version is you're going to want to position your rift near cover as much as possible. This allows you to dip back behind cover to allow your health to regen enough before you peek back out. Because it's not going to matter how much damage resistance you have if you're dropping your rift in the middle of nowhere with no cover to allow your health to regen. When popping my rift near cover, this allowed me to challenge multiple enemies at once. Because my teammates were trying to use my rift as well, it was almost forcing them to have good positioning. Now let's get into some great builds or loadouts you can run to really get the most out of this exotic. Getting into our first subclass that's going to be a great pairing with the stag, and it's going to be Bottom Tree Stormcaller. And I recently did a build video that I mentioned at the beginning where I talked about Bottom Tree Stormcaller and some great exotic pairings and things you could do to really get the most out of it. And the stag is going to easily fit into that build. So link at the top right hand corner to check out after this on what that build is and the stag fits perfectly with this subclass and that's because of first of all the perk electrostatic surge the rift lasts longer and it charges faster and you run faster when allies are near but keeping in mind what the stag does with the stag when you get critically wounded you're already getting that big burst of rift energy and then now with electrostatic surge we're also getting our rift to charge even faster on top of running 100 recovery which you should be doing with this perk so you're gonna be getting rift incredibly fast especially as you're around your teammate it's gonna allow you to pop tons and tons of rifts around your teammates and for yourself and really take advantage of having that damage reduction from the stag as much as possible. And that's really the goal here with these builds. How do we take advantage of the damage reduction and get it as quickly as possible and as often as possible? And there's another great pairing here, and that's the Arc Soul. So net with Bottom Tree, when you pop a rift, you're getting an Arc Soul. And for obvious reasons, this makes this an even better choice because as we're popping our rifts constantly now we're going to be constantly having that arc soul as well which got a recent buff with season 15 where it fires 10 percent more allowing essentially doing 10 percent more damage and i found this when paired with a damage resistance just makes you even more of a nuisance against those enemies because now not only are you taking longer to kill because you're taking longer to kill and obviously you're dish dishing out some of your own damage with your hand cannon or whatever weapon you're using you know, on top of that your arc soul is also adding to that damage and i've really found the arc soul can be really a lifesaver in some scenarios because you're doing that it, you're doing your own damage and sometimes arc soul just gets that little bit of chip damage in between shots to help you finish off that kill a little bit quicker or at the very least i often find it distracts my enemy a ton because they're constantly being peppered by that arc soul and it's just something else they have to contend with when they're trying to fight you well in your rift and of course we have landfall which has been recently buffed where it fires bolts of lightning into the ground in all kinds of directions giving a much larger aoe and doing more damage even allowing you to kill titans of certain resilience as well in their bubble and this is something i really recommend using defensively some people try to use landfall offensively and you will get lucky here and there but most of the time uh, most players will be able to see that coming and they'll just kill you right out of the air as you try to fly in I found when using landfall it's best to allow the enemy team to kind of collapse in on you, think they're going to get the kill, that's when you can fly up and then drop your landfall and secure a bunch of kills all at once, and it makes it easier to get the follow up kills because this super once you're in storm trance is still not that fast, and so it's going to make you have a lot less ground to cover because a lot of the enemy team will have already come to you in that scenario. For our next subclass that this exotic pairs amazingly with, it's going to be 
shade binder yes you thought it was dead but it is not even close and what you want to make sure you're running here with shade binder is you want to make sure you're running the glacial grenade and the reason is because of a very important fragment and that's whisper of chains which allows us that when we're near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal you take reduced damage from targets how much reduced damage it's about 25 percent now this does stack uh, to a degree with the stag adding up for a total of 35 percent damage reduction so instead of being headshot for 60 while in a rift and with a glacial grenade near or around us now we're being hit for 45 damage to the head from a 140 rpm hand cannon and this allows you to tank a lot more damage than just a 140 rpm hand cannon uh the bit number one example i can think of is slug shotguns slug shotguns are very prominent in the crucible right now and this when you combine whisper of chains and a glacial grenade with your rift and the stag you're going to be able to tank slug shotgun shots to the head and be able to survive that and that's not a surprise for your enemy then nothing will be and some other fragments you're going to want to use outside of whisper of change the first being whisper of shards where when you shatter your stasis crystal it's going to temporarily boost your grenade recharge rate this allows us to get our grenade back even faster which is all going to make sense when i talk about our mods in just a second here this allows us to get our grenade even faster along with whisper of torment where you, gain, you gain grenade energy anytime you take damage from targets. This is absolutely amazing for running the stag because you're standing in your rift, you have your stasis crystal near you as well, and you're just tanking all this damage. And you're gonna get your grenade energy back very quickly running these two together and then running Whisper of Rending. So, so when your, your kinetic weapons do increase damage to stasis crystals, this is gonna allow you to break those stasis crystals right before they run out and disappear, allowing you to get that uh, benefit from Whisper of Shards where you get that temporary boost and recharge rate. So these are the ones you would want to rec I recommend running all together for this build when you're choosing to run the stag. It's gonna give you a ton of grenade energy along with that damage reduction boost with the glacial grenade uh, to allow you really tank an insane amount of damage uh, with this pairing. And this is what brings me to our mods. And for your mods, I highly recommend bolstering detonation, uh, grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. And as I just talked about, a lot of the stuff we were doing with Shade Binder is allow us to get our grenade energy back quickly. This allows us to be constantly throwing our grenade. And if we're getting those freezes off or doing damage with our glacial grenade, this is gonna allow us to get a bunch of that class ability energy back even faster. But then taking it up another notch, I do also recommend running double bomber. So this reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. So essentially you're popping tons and tons of rift rifts using uh, this subclass and then getting your grenade back constantly, hopefully doing damage with that grenade, constantly proccing, bolstering detonation and getting that grenade energy back even faster. So it creates a really nice synergy with stasis and shade binder on top of making you an absolute juggernaut with the amount of damage you can take running this subclass. For weapons that pair best with the stag and these two particular builds, so being Bottom Tree Stormcaller and Shade Binder with uh, Whisper of Chains and the other uh, aspects we talked about, I highly recommend Ace of Spades, mainly for the reason that you have constant radar. This really allows you to sit in your rift and aim down sights and really hold lanes without any worries because your radar is constantly gonna be up. You don't have to worry about being flanked or caught off guard in your rift. And this allows you to just have complete awareness while laning in your rift. On top of the fact that when you get a kill with Ace of Spades, it's gonna allow you to get that reload off, get Memento Mori and do a ton of damage. And this gun has great range, one of the probably best in class range for a 140. So it's gonna be a best all around option in your kinetic slot. Another great weapon option for these builds is of course, no time to explain, but the ability to get that little turret on top of your arc buddy, especially if you're running bottom tree storm color. This is another great option that I used a little bit, but I still preferred Ace of Spades overall, again, because of that radar advantage you have. Then I recommend a slug shotgun uh, to use more defensively. So when people start encroaching or pushing you well in your rift, you can use this to kind of set up, line up the shot and get those easy headshots. I recommend something like Sojourner's Tail. And if you don't want to run Ace of Spades and you prefer something like Fatebringer or Judgment, then of course, Duality is going to be a great option in the energy slot. If you're heavy, not really that important, uh, but I do recommend something like a machine gun, something long range. Again, the more we can take fights in our rift, 
and focus on getting that damage reduction while on our rift, the better off we will be. So make sure you're choosing weapons that cater to a playstyle of holding down and locking down an area in a rift because you're gonna be a lot better off and you're gonna see the rewards of holding down your rift and just how much damage you can take. It's almost impossible to lose 1v1s well in your rift and you really are in a place where it's much harder to lose any engagement you're in. Overall, guys, I must say the stack has been an absolute joy to run in the Crucible. This is an exotic I would never imagine myself running before and to me was borderline useless. Now, this is something I could see just switch things up throwing on all the time just because I felt so strong with that damage reduction in my rift when using this exotic and it was just so awesome to see the synergy it created with my teammates especially when using bottom tree storm collar throwing down rifts giving my entire team damage reduction in those rifts on top of giving them arc buddies and it just really made solo queuing into the crucible a much more enjoyable experience if you enjoyed this video check out my build video featuring bottom tree storm collar that works great with the stag at the top of your screen or if you're looking to go next level with your rifts check out my video about how to use rifts effectively at the bottom